Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we will go through 20 sample questions and answer them in detail to help you prepare for the DP900 Azure Data Fundamentals exam. In case, if you like to purchase the entire set of practice questions, use the link in the description below. I request you to comment if you would like me to do this sample test for any other Azure certification and do subscribe, share and like the video. So let's get started. You are using an e-commerce application that reads and writes data to an Azure SQL database. Which processing is this application using? Well, e-commerce applications typically insert, update and delete small amounts of data affected by a large number of users as they typically go about their shopping experience like adding products to cart, updating the order quantities, etc. These individual transaction-oriented tasks are best handled by OLTP systems in real time. So option C is the right answer. Option D is incorrect as OLAP systems write complex queries to query the historical data. It is not used for processing real-time data. Option A is incorrect as batch processing processes transactions in batch in a sequential non-stop often simultaneous manner. OLTP systems are preferred for facilitating transaction-oriented applications. Option B is incorrect as it focuses on real-time processing of continuous streams of data and takes action at the time the data is created. Which of the following is true about the MPP engine or the massively parallel processing engine of Azure Synapse Analytics? To answer this question, take a look at the architecture of Synapse Analytics. Applications connect to the control node which runs the MPP engine. The MPP engine optimizes the queries for parallel processing and then passes the operations onto the compute nodes which does their work in parallel. Option B is the right answer as it correctly describes that MPP engine distributes processing across compute nodes. Option C is incorrect as there is only one control node on which the MPP engine itself runs on. Options A and D are incorrect too as there is no redirection of client connections. The MPP engine merely distributes the processing work to the compute nodes. What is the role of a pipeline in a data factory in the management of activities? To answer this question, we need to understand the difference between a pipeline and an activity in Azure Data Factory. Each Azure Data Factory instance can have one or more pipelines. And each pipeline is a logical grouping of different activities like the Hive activity or the Stored Procedure activity that together perform a task, for example, ingesting and cleaning log data. So the pipeline itself doesn't do anything. It just provides a way to organize different activities which actually do the work. So option A is the correct answer as a pipeline allows you to manage the activities as a set. Options B, C and D are incorrect which state the contrary to what we discussed. Read the following and select all the correct statements. Given statements are for different Azure data services and other data workloads. Azure Analysis Services is for building a semantic layer for BI applications. You can define metrics and KPIs at this layer on top of a data warehouse which the user uses to build reports and dashboards. They are not used for transactional workloads and Azure SQL Database would describe this better. So option 1 is incorrect. Option 2 is the correct choice as Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytics platform. Option 3 is correct too as Data Factory is a cloud based ETL that helps you to orchestrate data movement in the cloud. And finally Azure Synapse Analytics brings the two worlds of enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics together. That is you ingest, prepare and serve data for BI and machine learning needs. So 2, 3, 4 are correct statements. The final correct choice is option A. The visualizations on the Power BI dashboard are known as 
canvas, elements, tiles and reports are the answer choices. Well, here we have a Power BI desktop application. The individual pages are called reports. You can create several pages in a desktop instance. In each report, you can add any of the visualizations and these visualizations are called tiles. Once you are done with creating reports, you can pin these individual visualizations to the dashboard, which is also called canvas. So the visualizations on the Power BI dashboard are known as tiles. Which of the following are the characteristics of real-time data processing? Select two options. Looking at the options, option D is clearly incorrect as one of the main characteristics of real-time processing is that processing of input data stream takes place with minimized latency requirements. Option A is correct exactly for the same reason. Option C is incorrect as in real-time processing, the processing of input data takes place with a shorter turnaround time. It is stream processing where processing is done just after the data is created. Option B is correct too as in real-time processing, the processing of input data takes place periodically with a short turnaround time, that is seconds or even milliseconds. Read the statement, in relational databases, all the values in a column will have the same data type. Choose the correct option with respect to the given statement. The answer is yes, as in a relational database, we define the data type of each attribute in the beginning at the time of creation of the table. Once defined, all the values in any column can only belong to the defined type. An organization is using a bar chart to present the year-wise sales of a region to track the status of sales every year. How would you recognize the analytics here? Well, descriptive analytics is the right answer as it describes what happened in the past with the help of visualizations such as charts, graphs, dashboards and reports. Diagnostic analytics explains why something happened in the past. It takes the descriptive data to the next level and provides a deeper analysis of why something actually happened. It is also known as root cause analysis and includes activities like data discovery, data mining, drill down and drill through. Predictive analytics predicts what's likely to happen in the future with the help of historical data and machine learning models. Prescriptive analytics takes predictive analytics one step further. While predictive analytics tells you what will happen, prescriptive analytics suggests the best course of action for any future outcome. So it suggests options for taking advantage of future opportunities or mitigating risk and the potential outcomes of each decision option. You are working in an organization and your client wants to migrate all the SQL workloads to Azure such that complete SQL Server compatibility and OS level access will be maintained. Which Azure database would you recommend to the client? If the question had only mentioned complete SQL Server compatibility, you would be inclined to select Azure SQL Managed Instance as it is perfectly designed for migrating a large number of apps from on-premises to a fully managed PaaS environment. But the client doesn't require a PaaS environment, rather he needs OS level access, so option D is the right choice. Option B is incorrect as Cosmos DB is generally used for migrating NoSQL workloads like Cassandra and MongoDB to the cloud. And Azure SQL database is used to build modern cloud applications, so generally not used in migration scenarios. A database index allows a query to delete, retrieve, find or search data efficiently from a database. We need to choose a correct answer from the options given below. Well, a database index is like the index in a textbook. Similar to how a textbook index helps you to find the relevant content faster, a database index helps you to retrieve records faster from a database. So option B is the right choice. 
You work as a data associate in a cloud provider company and a data scientist asks for a suggestion on the cloud service with a fully managed platform to run the application but with no management. What would you suggest? Just observe this image to understand who is responsible for managing different layers of the application stack. With IIS, you get greater control of the OS and runtime but the responsibility too to manage most of the stuff in cloud. As you go towards PaaS and SaaS, your responsibility goes down and the cloud provider's responsibility goes up. So SaaS solutions provide a fully managed platform and there will be less user management for the data scientist and will be the right answer. Which of the following is not a feature of Azure database for MariaDB? Azure Database for MariaDB is a relational database service in the Microsoft Cloud based on the MariaDB Community Edition. Even if you do not know much about MariaDB, you can straight away say that options A, C and D are incorrect. Almost all database services in Azure provide high availability, predictable performance, auto-scaling, backups and point-in-time restore. In addition to that, Azure databases provide secure data protection with enterprise-grade security. All the ROSI points are a feature of MariaDB and are therefore incorrect. Finally, although you can read MySQL system database, you cannot write into it as it is a read-only database and it is used to support PaaS functionality. So option B is the right answer. The next question is about fill in the blanks. What contains trusted fabric controllers and supporting systems? This question is about SQL database security features like data segregation and isolation. The entire Azure production network is segregated into three primary VLANs in a logical manner. The FC VLAN, which is the fabric controller VLAN, contains trusted fabric controllers and other supporting systems. Just to remind you, Fabric Controller is the central orchestrator of the Azure Fabric, so Azure places significant controls to mitigate the threats to it. The Fabric Controller is placed in the FC VLAN. The main VLAN interconnects the untrusted customer nodes. So communication is permitted from the FC VLAN to the main VLAN, but cannot be initiated from the main VLAN to the FC VLAN, thereby reducing the possibility of running malicious code from any unauthorized systems on the fabric controller. Finally, device VLAN contains a trusted network and all other infrastructure devices. Communication is also blocked from the main VLAN to the device VLAN. So the answer is FC VLAN which contains trusted fabric controllers. Which of the following is used to create and modify the structure of database objects? In SQL, there are four different types of commands. The data definition language or DDL is used to create and modify the structure of database objects. For example, create, alter or drop statements. So option B is correct. Data query language or DQL is for querying data from the database. For example, the select statements. Data control language or DCL is used to control access to database by creating roles and granting or withdrawing permissions. For example, the grant and revoke statements. And data manipulation language or DML is used for the manipulation of data in the database. For example, the insert, update and delete statements. Which of the following is a unique identifier for the document, often hashed for the even distribution of data and helps in the retrieval of data from the document in the document data store? The document data store typically stores data in the form of JSON documents and the application can retrieve documents by using the document key which is a unique document identifier often hashed to distribute the data evenly. So the correct answer is document key. In document data store, for example in Azure Cosmos DB, there isn't anything like primary key, secondary key or the hash key. So the other options are incorrect. 
you have a file system where text files are stored. The primary index of a file is the file path, but you want to perform a search based on the contents of the file. Which of the following would help you to find the path to the files as per the matching criteria? Well, an external index acts as a secondary index for a data store and can be used to search based on the contents of the file held in other data stores. Here, in the given scenario, the primary index of the file is the file path, but to search data based on the contents of the file, an external index data store can be used, which will create an external index and perform the search. The other three options do not provide the ability to search information based on the contents of the file, so they are incorrect. A document data store typically stores data in the form of JSON documents. In a key value store, you associate each data value with a unique key by using an appropriate hashing function. In a graph data store, the information is represented in the form of nodes and edges. Consider the JSON document for your e-commerce website. What will be the SQL command to retrieve the product name from the given document? To retrieve the product name, the correct SQL query will be this. Options A and C are incorrect as they are MongoDB queries and not SQL queries. The objects in blob storage cannot be accessed via. There are 5 options and we need to choose one. Objects in blob storage can be accessed by Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, client storage libraries for different languages like .NET, Java and Python and storage REST API. There is nothing in Azure called Azure Connect. There is only an Azure AD Connect which is related to Azure Active Directory and not to Azure Storage Account. So option D is correct answer. Well, this question looks big and complicated, but all it is asking you is, what are the sequence of steps to be followed to delete an Azure Cosmos DB account when you are done with the service? If you are deleting the Cosmos DB account in the Azure portal, these are the steps in sequence. First, search for the resource groups in the Azure portal. Next, select the resource group that has Azure Cosmos DB account. Third step is to click on the delete resource group button. And finally, enter the name of the resource group you want to delete and click delete. So the correct order is 2143. You can also just delete the Cosmos DB account if the resource group has other services that you want to retain. Which of the following is not a checkpoint for troubleshooting issues when working with Azure Cosmos DB .NET SDK? When you are troubleshooting issues in production, it makes sense to avoid preview SDKs and always use the latest SDKs. So option A is incorrect. SDK logging is a very important tool when troubleshooting issues. It allows you to see what's going on behind the scenes, so setting up logging is a valid checkpoint. Option B is incorrect too. Based on this explanation, option D is the correct answer as it says disable logging which is not a valid checkpoint. And finally, logging SQL query metrics from responses helps us to understand and analyze query performance which is important for troubleshooting. So it is incorrect too. Once you are done, submit the test and you can verify your performance from the result. Also you get the performance report domain wise. So you can analyze the questions for any particular domain and you will see all the questions related to that domain, their correct answers and explanations for each question and also links to the Microsoft documentation in case you like to learn the concept in depth. So if you are serious about clearing the DP900 exam, check the description for the link to the entire practice test that cover the length and breadth of all the objectives in the exam. Also please comment if you would like me to do the sample test for any other Azure certification and do subscribe, share and like the video.